This is the video demonstration for legend symbology, labeling, and layouts of Introduction to GIS at St. Charles Community College. We are going to break this lecture into three sections, so each segment will have a focus to it. This one will be on the legend symbology. So I've opened up a project and have added a few feature classes to it, U.S. cities, the rivers just in Florida, the lakes of the country, and the United States. And we're going to go through and look at how to symbolize a polygon versus a line versus a point for each of them. We'll start by just opening up the symbology dialog box. Each feature class, remember that's different than the data frame, but each feature class has a property box. Again, you get to it by right clicking on the individual feature class and then moving down to its properties. We will symbolize each of these individually. Uh, right now it looks like I'm at cities, although I could switch that easily. The general tab is where we change the name of the layer. Now we're going to move over to the symbology tab. Within this tab, we're going to manipulate between the left-hand box, where we can select different options on this side, which changes the function of the rest of the box. If we look at uh, the features top, the, the top listing, which is features, we get the option for single symbol. We can manipulate what this symbol looks like. Within single symbol, it means that each and every point, in this case a city, will look the same, but maybe we want the actual symbol itself to be different. In order to do that, you can either select it within the table of contents itself just by clicking on the symbol, or you can come into the symbology box and click the box here. At that point, you get a list of shapes or uh, indicators that you can use for the symbol itself. You can change the color by selecting the color and choosing whichever you want. Let's make it different just so we can see a difference. Green just to have it show up. You can increase the size and it will show you how big it is up here. You can also edit it more specifically if you choose to do that. You can add some additional references. So for example, if I choose the style references here, I can add some categories of symbols. Um, I think uh, crime is what we've used before. You can get some interesting ones there. But a note on that, uh, just because one of these symbols might be interesting or you might think that it's, it's fun, like a boat might be kind of fun, uh, that does not represent what you're showing. You want to be careful about making sure that your symbology matches what you're showing. So that would be misleading to make uh, the, a symbol for cities be a boat because then it would indicate that it had something to do with boating. So we're just going to maintain our traditional list and maybe we'll change it to a star or something like that, but it doesn't have to be anything too drastically different. So I've chosen a star. Again, I'll change the color back to green just so we can see it. I can't see that very well, so let's change it to a different color green or maybe orange. How's that? And then once we select OK, we can see its representation here. And then when we select OK in the final box, we can see that not only do we see the difference in the table of contents, but we can also see it on the map as well. Now, each different type of feature class that we have has some different options. So let's switch over to a new feature class. Maybe we'll go to the states, the full states. I can switch that to or open up the property box for that uh, and either leave each state the same or I can alter it. One thing that's pretty useful to do for states is to make it a background. I might often in an assignment ask you to make the states hollow, which means that it has no color. And I might ask you to increase the outline width to one. Two is a little bit too thick, but you can, you can play around with this and see how, how you like it. This way we can still see the outline of the states, but it doesn't distract from the other things that we're, that we're talking about. If we want to make some other changes, we can also switch uh, how the symbology is presented by using, instead of single symbol, we can switch down here to categories and select unique values. Now, to do this, we have to make some choices. Unique values allows the computer to categorize, in this case, cities together based on groupings. 
So let's say that I wanted to identify whether or not the city was the capital, and I wanted that to be represented in the symbology. I could select capital. You will have to add all of the values to it by selecting this button here. I will regularly encourage you to uncheck the All Other Values box. You can see in the count listing that there are zero. There are no records in this database that have any other identifier, whether then it is a national or a state capital. Now you can choose a color ramp. You can be specific in terms of the range of colors that you want, or you can alter these individually. So let's do a couple of things here. First of all, I want to change the shape, and I want whether it is a national capital or a state capital or just a regular city, I want the shape to all be the same. So first I'm going to change all of the symbols. Where it says Symbol, I select that button and select Properties for All Symbols. Then I can go in and I can go back and find my little symbol that I used before, the diamond. I don't need to worry about color right now because I'm going to alter that. And then select OK. And you can see that everything changed to a diamond. Now before I go any further, I want to change the order in which the cities are listed in my table of contents. So right now the listing will be a regular city that is not a capital in any way, then the national capital, and then separate state capitals. But I would rather them go in the order of importance. So I would rather it be regular city and then the state capital. So the way we can do that is just by highlighting whichever we're interested in moving and selecting the up or down buttons. So now my order is regular city, state capital, national capital. So at this point I'm going to change the individual colors of the diamonds themselves to give an indication of importance. You can also do this with size if you want. Maybe we'll do both. So I double click on the individual symbol and now I'm going to change the color maybe we'll use a blue. So we'll start out in blue and I can change the size of this individual one. We'll do it in round numbers so we'll start at 10. When I do so the individual size has altered. Then I double click on the state capital. Let's give it a higher intensity of blue. We'll move down to this. And the previous one was 10 so let's change this one to 15. And then we'll go to the national capital and again give our most intense range of blue, it's almost purple, and move it up to 20 so that we have 10, 15, and 20. So at this point you can see that we have a range not only of color but also of size to indicate intensity. So now on our map we can fairly clearly identify which cities have a level of importance to them. So that would be an indication of unique value, and we can do that. These happen to be points, but we could also do that with uh, lines or polygons as well. Now we're going to look at the option called Graduated Color. So we're going to do this in the Rivers category, the Rivers Feature Class, again by right-clicking on Rivers down to its Property box, and in the Symbology tab. We will move over here through categories, which is what we just used for unique values, into quantities. Quantities has graduated colors and graduated symbols, a very similar uh, categorization just presented differently. We'll stick with colors for this one. The first thing that we have to identify is which category or which field within our da ta database is going to be altered. So let's alter this by length, for example. So if our river is short, it would be one shade of a color. If it is longer, it would be a different shade of a color. Once that is selected, it prompts us with a range, although these are very easily changed. You can actually double click right into the box itself and manually change it if you want. There are also ways to change the number of categories. It defaults at 5, but let's say I changed it to 3, it would automatically recalculate for me. I can alter the color ramp. 
This happens to be rivers, so it seems reasonable that these would be green. But again, just like we did before, we can click directly onto the color and change it itself or change the width of it. Maybe we want this one to be particularly wide or have a different look to it. We can change any type of symbol that we want. We can also change the label itself. We might leave the range alone, but maybe we want to change what shows up in the, the table of contents. So I'm going to double click into the label box and type uh, uh, whatever it is that we want. I'll just make it easy here. Oops. And we'll make this one called Lawn. So just so we get the idea, whether it's a short river of this length or a longer river, medium, or a, a long, uh, even longer river. Once we've made those determinations, then we just OK the process. These are rivers within Florida, so we'll have to zoom in here so we can see a little bit more specifically. So again, now we can tell quite clearly which rivers are short and which rivers are long based on the color that is showing with them. Graduated color would, excuse me, graduated symbol would be a similar process. You wouldn't use it with a river. You would probably use it with a point, but either way you could make the same uh, determination. Another option that we might use is to present the data in the form of a chart. So we'll do that with some information that we have within the city's database. I'm going to jump back out to the full extent of our map, which shows everything including Alaska and Hawaii. So I might zoom in just to show the lower 48. If I go into my city's property box again, again using my symbology tab, I can go to the left hand side and select charts. You can create a chart that looks like a pie or columns side by side or stacked on top of each other, whatever your preference is. We might start with a bar column. And then it presents to you fields that would be eligible for this type of presentation. Usually these have to be numeric fields because it has to be something that is counted. So then we just go in and select what we're interested in. Maybe we want to look at the difference between males and females, although to be fair, usually that's about 50-50. So let's make something a little different. Maybe we'll compare the population of each city that is black, and if we choose that, we would select it in the left and then arrow it over. And then maybe we want to compare that to the population that is Hispanic, for example. Again, we would select it here and then arrow it over so that we have the two choices right here. Once we've selected our two choices, then we can OK the process. And then what we end up with is an imagery of individual cities, not just an icon that shows the city itself, but for example, an icon that shows the difference between the black population and the Hispanic population, which we can see listed over here on the left side. So that can be useful as well. This will be the end of the symbology portion of this lecture.